Welcome to FCCWO Church. I am Pastor Milton. I bring you greetings by uh, way of the Lord and um, by Apostles Chastain and Ella Rock as our overseers of the house uh, founders. And so we welcome you to uh, our live stream service. Um, some of you may be saying, well, this doesn't look like FCCWO. Well, it's not. It's, um, this is our secret offsite location. No, this is um, an offsite location due to the winter weather that we are um, experiencing here in Fredericksburg. And so um, we are still bringing to you the same great word today. Um, I still wasn't able to get uh, Pastor Keisha's mic to uh, lead you guys in praise and worship today. You know, that's the anointed mic, you know. But, um, but nonetheless, we're going to bring God's word to you today in, in power and in, in clarity and in truth. And so um, I'm going to ask you guys right there where you are in your homes, um, or wherever it is that you may be viewing us from, um, just to lift your hands right now and just to bless the name of the Lord and just to let him know how good he is and, and, you know, that you thank him just in case you're just rolling out of the bed. Thank him for this day that he has given uh, you. And, and let's just exalt his name right now. And so, Father, we just come before you right now. And we bless you and we thank you for another day and another opportunity that you have given us to uh, to receive your word. We thank you for uh, your truth and clarity that will go forth. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who's here with us and in us and and the same Holy Spirit that's here with me right now is is with all of our viewers right there where they are and so we thank you that your power is here to save heal and to deliver and so we thank you for you came to set the captives free and so we honor you today and we bless your name father in this place always and we thank you father for uh, hearts that are open and ready to receive your word today for minds that are alert and attentive um, to receive your word with, as your word says in James, with meekness, because it is able to save our souls. And so we bless you and we do honor you and we thank you in Jesus mighty name. Amen. All righty. Well, good morning again. Good morning again. So I uh, apologize for the little delay here, but we are ready to roll. We are ready to roll. And so um, I want you guys to continue to be encouraged out there, you know, so you know, last year was a trying year for a lot of people, not everyone, but for a lot of people. Um, and, and some people still continue to have uh, challenges even right now. So, but we want you uh, to be encouraged out there, you know. And so one of the uh, things that was established at the beginning of this year, we declared that we are headed towards destination greatness, okay? So flight number 2021, destination greatness that's where we are headed and so do you hear greater do you hear greater do you hear what God is saying to you in these days um, as we talked about last week God wants us to look from the place of where we are to the place that that he uh, and all of the opportunities all of the the purpose that he is showing us and that he's revealing to us God is taking us to a place that we have not been before okay and so I want you guys to understand that. So it's important that, that as um, we experience uh, the leading of the Holy Spirit in these days to help us to navigate through all of the things that we experience in these days, because there are uh, more challenges in these days. There are new things. Jesus, in fact, prophetically speaking, Jesus warned us and he looked ahead and all throughout the word, there are different scriptures that warn us that uh, the days ahead and the times that you and I live in, even right now, they were already spoken of. And he warned us that there would be certain things that we would experience, certain challenges and, 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 and even certain hardships that would be on the earth that that would be around us. And so um, but he also said, be of good cheer. So I want you right now to just, you know, get your jig on, get your dance on. He said, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. I've conquered it for you. So that's the good news in all of the things that you and I experience and that we go through, that Jesus has conquered it all. Amen. And so we have been uh, talking about uh, for the last several weeks, greater dimensions of life. And, and God wants us to experience greater dimensions in every area of our lives. It doesn't matter, you know, where you come from, what your color, your nationality is. It doesn't matter even what your education background is. It doesn't matter any of those things that we sometimes um, establish as 
predetermined qualifications for a greater life, okay? And all of those things do matter. They do impact us in some way, shape, or form, but there is even an even greater thing that impacts our lives, and that's the truths of God's word, okay? That's the presence of God, his favor on our lives, all of those things, okay? And, and as we talked about last week, there are spiritual laws that supersede all of the natural laws. Even as the Bible says that God took the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And so, you know, there are things that we sometimes put all of our trust in and so forth. But God says, you know, there are things that, you know, I can show you what I can do with what seems like nothing or with those that everybody else turned their back on or said they would have never amount to anything. God says, let me show you what's on the inside of them. Let me show you what I can do. And that's that could be you right there. OK. And so we want you guys to be encouraged and know that that God is for you, that that he's against the enemy that is against you. OK. And, 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 and that we are headed to a place that is far greater than where we have been before. So that's good news uh, for today. So today, as we continue, um, want to talk about begin to talk about today. Um, as we are headed towards uh, destination greatness, um, we one of the things that the Lord had shared with me at the uh, at the the turn of the year was um, three things in regards to this year: prayer, discernment, and advancement. Okay, and um, be, before discernment, there must be prayer. Okay, um, prayer is a uh, well. Let me say it this way: uh, a lack of discernment oftentimes indicates a lack of a prayer life, okay? So there are things that God shows us and that he reveals to us in our time of prayer with him that, that opens our eyes up to see things that were hidden from us or that we were unaware of, uh, whether it's something natural, there's something behind the scenes working or something that's at the root of something that has been going on and God opens our eyes up by way of prayer by the Holy Spirit who reveals the truths, um, past, present, and future to us, okay? So um, discernment is a big, important thing that should be in our lives, and, and, and we get more discernment and greater discernment by loving truth, as you've heard me say before, by um, communing with the Holy Spirit, and, and in our time of prayer that we spend with the Lord, there are things that He shows us. And so um, God wants us also to advance. See, God doesn't want us to have a, 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 a regressive mindset or a maintenance mindset. He wants us to always have an expansion mindset, that we are progressing, as the Bible says, that we're always immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So there should be a progression that is taking place in our lives and in, in the work of the Lord that we're involved in and in our walk with the Lord. There should be an advancement that is taking place. And so I'm telling you right now that God is advancing us into uh, uh, greater dimensions in our lives in the kingdom of God. He's taken us to greater places, greater heights, greater depths. In, in the things of God that he wants us to discover and to walk in in these days. Greater dimensions of, the, of walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. Greater dimensions of, of our clarity and revelation knowledge of the word of God and our understanding, okay? And so God has, has prepared certain things for us in our generation, in your generation that you and I are in, and, and he wants us to walk in these things today. However, in the midst of everything that we are doing to advance, we also um, are, are, must be mindful that we have an, in, an enemy, an adversary, that is also trying to deter our advancement. So we're gonna look at a couple of things today that are um, just so that our awareness is increased of the detours of advancement, okay? So we're gonna look at a couple of detours of advancement. So uh, let's turn over to the book of Daniel, chapter 7, and we're going to look at verse 25. Book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 25. And I'm going to begin reading this out of the King James Version, and then I'm also going to read it out of um, another um, version. But in the King James, uh, Daniel 7, 25, and it says, 
um, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. So prophetically speaking here, Daniel is talking about a, a, a particular ruler, uh, uh, an, an antichrist, okay, that um, would come on to the world scene. And, and as I've mentioned to you guys before, um, you know, there is a, a, a spiritual aspect of things that takes place before if the physical embodiment of something. Just as the Word of God says that, um, that the spirit of Antichrist has already gone into the world, okay? And so we have seen uh, the, the, the fruits of that type of spirit in the world that you and I live in even right now. And throughout history, we have seen that, that spirit. So ultimately, one day there is going to be um, a revealed a, a, an actual person that is going to stand as the Antichrist, the one that history has been talking about, biblically history, biblical history has been talking about. But it says here, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, blasphemous words, okay? You got to understand where this person, this spirit is, is all about. It says, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High God, of the Most High, and, uh, and think to, to change times and laws, and they shall be given into the hand, into his hand until a time and times and a dividing and the dividing of time. All right. And the um, complete Jewish Bible, it says it this way. He will speak words against the most high. And it says, and try to exhaust. OK, which is a little bit different of how the King James worded it. OK, and, and the, the Jewish Bible says he will try to. OK, he will try to exhaust the holy ones of the most high. And, and this is what we see going on in our day and our age. Um, our adversary tries to exhaust um, us. He tries to exhaust us. How does he try to exhaust you? OK, how does he try to exhaust me by the things that that are, are thrown at us? Just think about the things that we have, have even gone through um, this last year, since this time last year. Uh, think about the things that, that come. It says to try to exhaust you. In other words, these things come to try to get you to be tired of serving God. These things come to try to get you to be tired of, 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 of continuing in the good fight of faith. These things come to exhaust you, okay, to try to exhaust your resources, your, your patience, you know, your, 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 um, your faith, your love walk. These things come to try to exhaust these areas in our lives so that we begin to turn away from God. You understand? So this is how uh, apostasy begins because we begin to turn away from God because we begin to get discouraged, disappointed, okay? We, you know, a lot of D's that we could, we could talk about here, okay? Uh, we, sometimes even people get deceived, okay? So there are a lot of D's that, that you know, distract it, okay? All of these things come to try to get you tired of serving God, you know? You, yeah, I'm tired of hearing the word. I'm, I'm tired of going to church, you know? Uh, you know, I, I'm tired of saying that. It doesn't seem like anything's happening. Nothing's changing. See, all of these things come to try to exhaust you that, that you don't feel like serving God, okay? And this exhaustion is not a physical exhaustion. It's a spiritual exhaustion, okay? Just as we, we, we talked about in previous weeks, as the Bible says, while men slept, th there was an enemy that snuck in and planted some tares among the wheat. So the enemy always tries to get you to a place of spiritual exhaustion so that now your guard is down. So now he can slip in there. So now the things that, that you might would have been alerted to and aware of and, and have been sharp and been you know, looking you know, to prevent, now you've gotten so exhausted, so distracted, so discouraged, so disappointed, man, just disappointed about things of life, that now the enemy has crept in and, and now he's tried to establish something in your life that, that God did not plant there, okay? And so the Bible warns us about those things. And the reason that the warnings are there is so that we can understand this is what your adversary is going to try to do. He's going to try to prevent you from advancing in the things of God. And so he uses all of these different tactics to try to detour us 
away from the advancement that God wants us to walk in personally. Think about your business. Think about uh, uh, your church. Think about the body of Christ. Think about our country, okay? Uh, our nation, whatever nation it is that you may be from that you're watching this in, you know? Think about all of those things that the enemy tries to get in, okay? To cause us to be exhausted where, man, you know, I'm just tired of serving the Lord, you know? And so that's not the place of where God wants us to be at, okay? He wants us to always be pumped up, fired up, and ready to go in regards to the things of the kingdom of God because there is advancement. There are things that God is doing in these days in the midst, in the midst of everything that has been thrown at us. There are things that God is doing right now. And so we're going to look at some of these things in a little bit. But be encouraged out there, you know. Don't go to sleep on, on the Lord, okay. Don't get so tired where, you know, you know, God, you know, just like the angel had to come in and kick Peter, you know, he was, a, they had arrested him and he was asleep. You know, he wasn't, you can tell he wasn't worried, but you know, we don't want to be that, that God has to come and kick us to wake us up. But this is what has been going on, you know, recently, you know, sometimes, sometimes for us to wake up out of the slumber, there has to be a jarring that takes place to, to shake us and say, whoa, What's going on? So this is some of the things that have been going on uh, right now. And, and I pray that you that you are awakening to the things. OK, some of the things that, that have been going on to open your eyes to see some things that maybe you did not see before. OK, so one of the D's I talked about several D's a few moments ago. And, and these things come again to exhaust us, to get you tired of of serving, serving God. You know, uh, you know, it, it, it just comes to try to zap the life of God out of you. OK. And so, you know, this week, as I was, you know, meditating on some things, you know, uh, you know, these are the things that the Lord was impressing on me that, you know, to keep everyone encouraged so that you're keeping your focus and understanding what the enemy is doing. But we're also going to see what what the Lord is doing in the midst of this. OK. And so let's look at deception. This is a big thing in our day, um, and, and, and it's a, a very treacherous thing that we have to be aware of. <clears throat> Jesus warned us in um, Matthew chapter 24 about deception. So let's turn there and let's look at it really quick, because this is one of the tactics that the enemy uses to try to exhaust people, okay, to get you away from serving God the way that you should and understanding uh, the truth of, of what God is really saying, what's really going on and so forth. In Matthew chapter 24, um, we're gonna pick up in verse uh, three, we'll read verses three and four for the sake of time today, but um, you can read 24, the ch whole ta chapter of 24, as uh, Jesus uh, lays out several things in there that are important for us to know in the days that we live in. But we're gonna focus on verses three and four right now. Now, just to give a background here, this is why we're reading chapter th uh, verse three, excuse me. And it says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, this is Jesus, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, uh, when shall these things be? And Jesus had just discussed several things that would take place that would happen in Jerusalem and, and so forth and, and, you know, and different things that were going on that would happen. And so his disciples privately, they pull him aside and say, you know, Tell us, when are these things going to take place? And, um, and, and then they also ask, what shall be the sign of thy coming? So um, this is the, the premise for what Jesus begins to answer. And, um, and, and they say also, and of the end of the world. All right. So um, they, there's a three part question. Uh, what are the, uh, the, the signs of um, what, when shall these things be? What is the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? And then Jesus answered. The first thing that he answers um, to their questions is this. He says, take heed that no man deceive you. All right. So, you know, we've talked, you know, at length and I've, I've mentioned it earlier today about the importance of discernment. And we're talking about spiritual discernment. And you can go back and look at some of the uh, previous uh, teachings that are, that are on the site 
on um, things that we talked about discernment before. But Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. And so there, you know, you have to be aware of, 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 of many sources of media outlets uh, just because it's out there and it doesn't matter how many times it's put out there doesn't mean necessarily that it's true, okay? But that's what our human reasoning begins to take it as the more that we begin to see stuff. So this is why it's important that, to make sure that you are keeping the truths of God's word before you because it helps to keep you from uh, getting deceived and getting into error or, or as they say, getting the wool pulled over your eyes, okay? And so it's important to keep ourselves in the truth of God's word, okay? Even over in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, uh, the Apostle Paul begins to uh, speak some things in regards to this by way of the Holy Spirit as well. And, uh, you know, and these are some of the things that Jesus was also talking about in Matthew chapter 24 about deception. And so we see where this deception comes from. We see where what the author of it is and, and where the roots of this deception comes from. It says, now the spirit, this is a capital S here, the, talking about the Holy Spirit. Now the spirit speaks expressly, expressly, excuse me. He's, he's warning us. He's, 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 he, I mean, he's, he's pleading with us to understand this and to see this. It says the spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, which are the times that you and I are in right now. Okay. Some shall depart from the faith. Okay. So again, this, this goes along with what Jesus said in Matthew 24. It goes along with what Daniel said in, in Daniel 7, 25. Okay. Um, you know, it says, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. So there are, are certain spirits, and you see this is a lowercase s in, in this instance. There are, are, are certain spirits that are out there that, are, that have produced uh, information that is not truth. They have produced information that goes against what God's word says. They have produced information that causes you to be drawn away and enticed and seduced, okay, lured away, okay, entrapped and, and, and drawn away from the truth of God's word, okay? And so it says, given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So there are things that are taught. There are doctrines that have been established. There are things that, are, that have been taught to men that are, that are you know, even indoctrinated. OK, you, they use the word doctrines of devils. OK, so how do you begin to change um, the generations and, and, and to begin to establish something um, for the days of head? And this is why uh, the enemy targets our children, because he knows that if he can indoctrinate them from an early age, that um, in certain things, they will grow up in certain beliefs. And we talked about the importance of. Of, of the proper belief systems last week, as we talked about the law of transformation, it's very important that we have the correct belief systems established in our lives. And those belief systems should be based on the word of God, not just on scientific facts and, and things of that nature, um, uh, not just on uh, things that we've learned in school or just from experiences in life. There might be truths in those things, but sometimes there are things that are in those things that we have, have become so loyal to, okay? And this is the thing. You have to make sure that you're not loyal to a belief system that is a, a doctrine of, of a devil, okay? So you have to make sure that you are loyal to the truth of God's word. And loyalty is a big thing, you know? We should be loyal to certain things, but we should make sure that what we are and who we are loyal to uh, um, is, is the word of God and the truth of God's word. And so it says here that some will give heed to these, these demonic doctrines that, that are taught and that are instilled. And as I mentioned, these things are oftentimes instilled in our children. Think about the things that, uh, that have been tried to be indoctrinated in our children about you know, various things, okay? from sorcery to magic to, to gender to all of these different things. And, you know, they go back to the early ages. They're not after, you know, necessarily the, what we call the old heads, okay? They're after the younger generations so that 
after a while, after, if you continue to indoctrinate and indoctrinate in the younger generations, pretty soon you'll have a whole nation that is full of a certain way of thinking. All right. And so these, these are one of the tactics of the enemy. So as we're talking about advancing the, you see, when we're talking about advancing, we're talking about advancing the agenda of the kingdom of God, not the world's agenda. Be not conformed to the world and the pattern of thinking, but we're trying to advance the agenda of the kingdom of God. Jesus declared the kingdom of God when he came here on the earth. And, 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 and he said, I'm here to preach the gospel of the kingdom. This is what he did. And so our job and our mission is to continue to occupy, you know, to maintain and establish and, and, and the things and reinforce the things that Jesus established. And so uh, we have to take heed and, and make sure that we're not deceived in the days that we live in um, concerning the doctrines and the things that are taught to make sure that what is established in our lives is truth. And how do we know it's truth? By what God's word says. As the scripture says, uh, thy word is truth, okay? And so um, the more we adhere to God's word, the more we study it, the more we make it a part of our lives, we listen to it so that our faith is built up, we continue to grow in it and it helps to keep us from being deceived, okay? See, sometimes we have made, we have put, people above what the word of God says. We have celebrity, we've made celebrities out of people in the church even, okay? And we have put the things, or put them ahead of what truths that we see in the word of God. And this is how you get off into error because you get so focused on, on the person where you get, you, you don't check it by the word of God. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't follow those that, that follow after Christ because we all do and we should. And so, um, but Jesus warned us that there would also be many that would come in the days that you and I live in that are coming in his name. And so we have to be aware of these things. And so there are all kinds of doctrines of devils that are taught in the church and taught across the pulpit. And, and so this is why I say what I say, okay? Thank God that, that God has blessed um, us to be able to have a church where the truth of God's word is taught and preached. We have apostles that, that, that dig deep for the truth, you know? And so we're so grateful for that. But, the, but there's so many things that are taught by um, uh, high positions in the church that, that don't always go with what God's word says, okay? Many different uh, denominations that are in the church that are things that are, uh, that doctrines that, are, that have been slipped in there that go against what God's word says, okay? So, um, so God wants us to have truth, not necessarily religion, okay? And so make sure that you have that in your life, all right? Um, another thing that we wanna look at today is distractions. And these are the things that the enemy brings into our lives to, um, to detour us or, or away from our destiny and our purpose in God as well. And so distractions can be a, 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 a big thing when it comes to um, our walk with the Lord. Um, <clears throat> you can write this down as a definition of distraction. Anything that prevents you from going into your destiny, your call, your purpose in life is a distraction. Now, when I was in school, um, I remember my third grade teacher and we used to have this song about uh, a noun. It says uh, a noun is a name, a noun is a name, a noun is a name of a person, place or thing. And so, um, you know, that was a, 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 a rhyme that was introduced to us to help us to remember what a noun was and what a noun is. And so I have learned also that a distraction is also the name of a person, a place and a thing. Okay. So there are, are, are distractions that come into our lives in many uh, ways, shapes, and forms, and it can be a person, okay? So when, when, whenever God has plans and purposes for your life, he will oftentimes bring a person into your life to help you to fulfill those things, to give you insight and revelation and to provide, to be a guiding voice in your life, you know, in those areas as well. But the enemy will also bring a person into your life to deter you away from your God-given purpose and destiny, okay? So a distraction can be in the form of a person as well, okay? And so, it, you know, it could be a, a situation or a relationship that you've been longing for, 
but you have to be careful because the enemy can also bring that into your life to distract you uh, away from um, what God is trying to show you and what he wants to do in your life, okay? So a distraction, just like a noun, can be a person, okay? A distraction can also be a, a place. It could be somewhere that you go or that you frequent that, that, that goes against what, um, what, what you should be doing and where you should be going, okay? So a distraction can be a place that you frequent and that, you know, you know it ain't good for you, okay? You know that it's not good for you, and I don't have to say the name of it, but you know. It's like that bird says, you know. And so, um, you know, you will have to be careful um, that there aren't places, you know, that you get so caught up in. Sometimes we make sporting events a place that we put, as, you know, before God, and it becomes a distraction. Sometimes there are other events or things that, we, uh, that become distractions in our lives. And then there are things also that become distractions in our lives. And the enemy loves to use the things that you enjoy to become a distraction. And this is where you have to keep the balance and you have to make sure that whatever is in your life, that, that it can be submitted in, un, unto the Lord and that it does not have preeminence over the Lord. And so, the, you know, in the days and the times that, you, got, that we, you and I live in, there are so many distractions that are around us uh, in the form of technology, you know, the, uh, you know, you have everything, you know, right here on this device that you can you can you can download all of your apps. You can watch all of your movies. You don't even have to have, uh, you know, a, a, a 75 or 85 inch TV on the wall. All you need is a phone and you can watch every single app and you can stream every single service. You can look at all of your social media. There's so many distractions. You can, you can talk to people all around the world. You can go places on your phone while sitting in your living room, okay? So many distractions, so many things that you have opportunity to, to go down the road of. And, 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 and so we have to be wise in these days, you know? Even sometimes while you, you should be listening to the word, and, and sometimes we, we do this, even while we're listening to the word, you know, when, and some of you may be doing it right now, uh-oh, it might be telling your business. You're watching a live stream and you're also watching something on TV right now. You know, see, there's so many distractions around us that the enemy tries to divide our focus to prevent us from missing key information that we might need, you know? And, and so it's very important that we stay sharp and that we stay focused and that we're listening intently to what God is saying to us. And so, um, you know, distractions are, are a big thing that we have to be aware of, you know? Even sometimes while you are sitting and you're listening, okay, your mind is somewhere else because we've gotten distracted. We're thinking about something later in the day, or we're thinking about something this week, or something that's going on in our lives that is, you know, that, that you know, we're, we're, we're just unfocused right now because of that, you know? So distractions are, are a big thing, and, and, and those are one of the, the tactics that the enemy uses to try to exhaust you, okay, to try to get you tired of, of, of listening and, you know, and plugging in and so forth, okay? And so we have to be uh, very mindful of the enemy's tactics, okay? So you got to know your enemy and, and the devices that he uses, all right? So we have to refocus. Um, Colossians chapter 3. If you would turn there for a moment, Colossians chapter 3. Um, this is what it says over in uh, beginning in verse 1. How to keep your mind focused and, you know, and when you are uh, dealing with and navigating through all of the things in your life, how to keep your, your mind focused. So that, you know, what I found is that when you begin to uh, get your mind focused on, on the things of God and the things of the kingdom of God and have those times where you go before the Lord, um, it helps to um, helps you to navigate through the, the situations of your life. And uh, it gives you better clarity and direction on what you need to do. Um, in Colossians chapter three, verse one, it says this. If you th then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. So he knows that you're on the earth. 
He knows that you're, you're dealing with situations and circumstances. He knows all of that when this was written. The Holy Spirit knows all of that when he communicated this. Okay, so don't think that God is unaware of your circumstance or your situation or the thing that you're dealing with and that you're going through. He's very aware of it. The Bible says that we have a high priest that is touched by the, the feelings of our infirmities. He understands our weaknesses. He understands the things that we go through. So he's very compassionate about um, your needs and where you are in life. Okay. But he says this, if you then be risen with Christ. So think about this. This is our spiritual status right here, right? So as you've heard Apostle Rock say before, maybe you haven't heard him say it before, so I'll say it now. We, we talk to the Lord and we approach him in prayer from the status of that we are seated at the right hand of the Father. Not that we are just here because we're thinking naturally about our physical place here on the earth and the physical problem that we're dealing with and so on. But spiritually, this is where you have to operate and govern from. Spiritually, I am seated at the right hand of, of God the Father in Christ Jesus. Because as it says here in this verse, we are risen with Christ. So now I approach my circumstance and my situation from that position of authority. And this is how we approach God and we, we talk to him from a position of prayer because we are right there at the right hand. We are there at his throne. We are there where all of the, 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 the decrees, the decisions, where all of his righteous and favorable judgments are issued. We are right there, okay? And so he says, because even though you're on the earth, and this is what he's saying, but yet you are risen with Christ. So he's, he's communicating your position that you should be speaking and declaring from. He says, seek those things which are above. What's right there at the right hand of God? Okay. Fullness of joy, pleasure forevermore. Okay. The goodness of God, his glory, that's right there. Okay. He says, seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. And who else is sitting there? You and I. He says, set your affection on things above, set all your desires, set all your, your focus and your attention on the things that are above. So this is a shift in the mindset that should be taking place here. So as we talked about last week in transformation, we should be establishing a superior mindset in our lives. So we got to cut ties and our loyalty to those, those destructive mindsets that cause us to go around in a perpetual cycle of, of defeat and misery and all of those things, okay? And, and, and wrong and bad habits and so forth. So we have to now take on a superior mindset. And he says, he says set your affections, set your mind, okay, on things above and not on the things of the earth. So it doesn't mean that you are ignorant and God is ignorant of the things that are going on on the earth, okay? He's, he's not ignorant that, that or unaware that coronavirus is on the earth. He's not unaware of financial situations on the earth. He's not unaware of any of those things, but he is fully aware, but he says, okay, so that what's in heaven is on the earth, establish your mind and your affection, your attention, your focus, on what I have done for you through Jesus Christ. And now because he's risen and you are also risen and you're seated at the right hand in him, he says, now put your mindset on that so that what's in heaven will be established on the earth. Okay. And so this is what he's saying. And he says, for you are dead and your life is hid uh, with Christ in God. All right. So we are a dead man speaking. We are a dead man that is setting our affection on the things above. What does a dead man speak? What is, what is the language of a dead man? Well, over in, uh, in the Gospels where um, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, he was about to go through some, uh, you know, some stuff. And you guys know what, what he went through and what he was about to go through at that time when he was in the Garden. Uh, uh, you know, a very... This was the, the, the quiet before the storm, if you would. He knew exactly all of the, 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 the 
the torment, the pain and everything that he was about to experience. And so he said, Father, if this cup, if there's any way that this cup can be passed from me, um, you know, let it be. But then he said, nevertheless, see, that's a dead man. That's the language of a dead man. See, in spite of all of the stuff, you know, in spite, you know, you, you know, there might be things that you, you know, enjoy doing or things that you want to do or God, you might have had your mind on doing a certain thing. And the Lord may speak to you and says, well, I want you to do this. You might have been preparing to go to sleep. And the Lord says, I want you to pray right now during this time. And, OK, see, the, the, the language of a dead man is, um, uh, you know, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I want to do. But nevertheless, According to what you're telling me, according to what you're saying, according to what I see in your word, this is this is what I'm going to do. See, that's a dead man talking right there. It, it starts out nevertheless. So even though I want to do this or even though I'm thinking about doing this, even though I thought I was going to do this, but God says, I want you to do this. So you say, nevertheless, because I am, as it says in verse three, we are dead. OK, and your life is now hidden in Christ. OK, so when we understand that, you know, I think that it will it will it will help to change the way that we view and we think about things. So that we know that our lives doesn't belong to us anymore. And so there we, we, we should not be saying, you know, can, can a dead man get tired? Can a dead man get exhausted? OK, can I get a dead man get tired of serving the Lord? He's already dead. Right. OK, so it says that we are dead and our lives are hidden in Christ. So there's no more you and I, okay? Everything that we do, from our thoughts, from our words, to the attitude in our heart, to the mindset that we have, to the actions that we take, we are now hidden in Christ. Amen? Amen, all right. So now, you know, as we've been talking about the things that the enemy uses to try to detour us or to d deter us, to distract us, to, you know, to try to prevent us from walking in God's purpose. And, and these things are to prevent us from advancing, okay? To prevent us from advancing. God also has strategies and he has tactics that he uses you know, to help us to advance. And sometimes they're not, excuse me, always what we think and what we seem, or sometimes it's not always even what we like to occur. OK, there's one particular uh, strategy that the Lord uses that we're going to talk about today. And maybe you didn't think of it as a strategy, but this strategy is called delay. All right. Somebody says, what? Delay is a strategy. Yes. When you understand what the Lord does in delay. So we're going to look at a couple of different examples of some things here today to see how the Lord uses delay. See, the Lord, you, you think that the enemy has strategies. I'm going to tell you what. He has nothing on the Lord, okay? I'm just telling you, ladies and gentlemen. You know, people like to glorify what the enemy is doing and all of that, man, please, hogwash, okay? The enemy has nothing on the Lord, okay? He has only but a, a small percentage of, of, you see, this is the thing, that people categorize um, the devil as this is God and this is the devil. No, 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 no. They're not equal counterparts, okay? This is what you guys got to understand, all right? God is God, and there's, there, there's infinity to his wisdom, to his strategy, to his divine tactics, and so forth. And, and sometimes we, because we live in time, we base everything that God does on our timing, OK, and and, and 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 we base things on that. And so the, the enemy, you have to understand that our adversary is a created being. He is not God. He's not omnipotent. He's not omniscient. OK, he's he, he can't be everywhere at one time like God is. All right. So you and I have to understand this. OK, that, yes, the enemy has strategies. He has tactics. But I'm going to tell you what it pales in comparison to what. God has and what God does. Even think about it this way, as the Bible says, had the enemy known what was going to happen or what was going to take place through Jesus, it says they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. See, the enemy 
had a strategy and had a tactic, and he thought that it was going to be a certain way when, he, when Jesus was crucified. He, he thought that that was it. But this goes to show that God's tactics, his strategies are far superior, far superior. God always outwits the enemy. And this is what you have to understand. We see an example of this, of how God uses delay. And I'm not going to read the, the entire chapter of it for the sake of time. But over in uh, Exodus, excuse me, Genesis, might be Exodus. I think I wrote down the wrong scripture here. I'm going to give it to you so you can go back and read it. Yes, Exodus chapter 14. So in Exodus chapter 14, it, it, it's the account of when Moses was leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. Okay. And so they get to the place of the Red Sea. And this is what you have to understand. See, God is a masterful tactician. All right. A masterful tactician. He knew that when he got the children of Israel to the Red Sea, he knew that Pharaoh's heart was going to turn and that he was going to pursue. See, God got them to a place, and this is a part of what happens in delay. See, we don't like delay because, man, we're used to everything microwave right now, especially in our time, all right? But you have to understand the beauty of the strategy, okay? There's a thing, you know, um, uh, you know I, I coach soccer, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, enjoy it. But there's a, a beautiful thing in, in the game of soccer called the buildup. And what the buildup in soccer is, there's, there's some deception that is into it, all right? And so the, the thing about the buildup in soccer is that a, a, a player does not score off of immediately um, they touch, when they touch the ball, okay? The buildup in soccer is where there has been such a movement of the players and the ball around the field until it gets the opponent out of a place or it puts the opponent in a place of vulnerability to where scoring becomes very easy. And then it's a dramatic finish and everybody, the crowd goes wild, okay? And God loves to have these type of moments and, and this delay is the buildup. He's a master tactician. And in these moments, God lets the enemy think that he's got to a certain place and that he's gotten a certain um, advantage, okay? And so, when in the account of um, Exodus chapter 14, God had delivered the children of Israel. He had brought them out. As it says, there was not one feeble one among them and so on. And, and, and God led them all the way to the place of the Red Sea. And uh, then the, the, the heart of Pharaoh was turned and, and the armies of Egypt began to pursue. God, did you think that God did not know this ahead of time when he told them to go that direction? God knew that ahead of time and he baited their enemy in and he got them to a place where guess what? And this is one of, this is how God reveals his glory in the, in the end of those things. And in the midst of that, see, we, you get to a place where it's, it's either God or, 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 or the armies of Egypt are going to crush you. Okay. And so in that instance, God revealed his power and how great and awesome he is. He revealed that. Uh, and when Moses de um, used the rod to depart the Red Sea and so forth. But God also used that opportunity to bait the enemy in. OK, to be crushed by those same waves that were just uh, split and departed. OK. And so you have to understand the, the, the how masterful of a tactician that God is. He knew ahead of time that, the, that Pharaoh was going to do that. And he said, okay, I got you. We're going to take care of this. All right. Not only did God deliver them, he got them to a place. And they were under, trying to figure out, you know, if you read in that account, the children of Israel started crying, you know, you know, you know, they started, you know, making all kinds of gripes and complaints about that. Now the, the Pharaoh's army is coming and so forth. But look at what God did in the midst of it. That same cloud that went before them, that guided them, God took it to the rear and it became the thing that protected them and that kept Pharaoh's army while they were going across the place, okay? See, God provided a window for them to get to the place 
and he got the enemy. He got the enemy to show his full hand, to show his full hand. And then he says, aha, I got you. And they were all crushed by the Red Sea. And this is what God does. We see this all throughout biblical history where God, you know, he's a masterful tactician. He gets the enemy to show his hand where he thinks he's got the advantage. And God says, I don't think so. <laughs> all right. He smacks his hand away and says, now this is what let me let me show you how awesome and how mighty I am. All right. So God uses delay as a strategy. You see, to us, we're thinking, oh, man, is God going to do anything about this? You know, we, we said, uh, how, how long is the enemy going to prevail? You know, say God all the while. See, he's looking, he's, he's sitting there laughing. He says, all right, come on, come on, get a little closer, get a little closer. And then wham. All right. So this is what God is doing, even in our day. But you guys got to understand that there is advancement that's taking place, even though it seems like that the enemy is doing a certain thing. OK. All right. So understand this. God is for you and he's against the enemy. He's against the one that's coming. All right. He's against the one that has been showing up. He's against him. All right. So God has got your back. All right. Understand that and know that. All right. Um, in the midst of this, Isaiah chapter 40. Let's turn over there. Isaiah chapter 40. And it says over here in Isaiah chapter 40, what should you do while you're waiting on the Lord? Okay. So in the midst, you know, of, of the things that we're going through. And so you don't get tired. Okay. So you don't get exhausted as it said in Daniel seven twenty five. Okay. What do you do? You wait on the Lord. As it says in verse 31, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. See, the Bible says that there are, times of refreshing that come from the presence of the Lord. Okay. So when we begin to wait on the Lord, when we begin to get into that secret place, when we begin to strengthen ourselves by our time of worship, our time of fellowship with the Lord, as you heard apostles say, you know, sometimes it doesn't, you know, it, that refreshing can take place all throughout the day. Okay. Two minutes here, three minutes there, 30 minutes here, an hour there. Okay. You know, while you're sitting in the car, while you're waiting in traffic, you know, instead of getting road rage and honking on your horn, you know, and staring people down, you know, while they driving the way that they are, you know how it is when you drive past a person that was driving, you know, 25 in a 55 and you drive past them and you look like that, like, what's your problem? You know, you know how it is. I know, you know. And so, you know, instead of getting into those moments of anger and frustration, use those times as times of waiting on the Lord. Just start to bless the name of the Lord and worship him. You know, you know, don't ask Jesus to take the wheel and you take your eyes off the road, but you keep your, 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 your eyes on the road, but keep your focus on Jesus. Okay. And so, you know, those times of refreshing that come from waiting on the Lord while you, you while God's strategy is working. See, this is what you got to understand. You thought that God wasn't doing nothing while you were waiting. God is working his plan. And this is why we need to continue to speak what God is saying, what he reveals to us. This is why you don't speak the evil report like the children of Israel did. But when God reveals this is what I'm doing. And even though it doesn't look like it in the natural that this is what I'm doing, he says, you speak my plan because now here in the earth, as we partner with God, his divine strategy has been revealed and it is up to us now to begin to execute it by us speaking what his strategy is, speaking that word, saying, Lord, this is what you said. I thank you. I, I, I thank you, Lord, that this is what you're doing right now. And you begin to do that and you begin to, you know, this is what he says. Look at, look at the latter part of verse 31. He says, but they that shall wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. See that, that refreshing renews your strength. So you don't get exhausted. You don't get tired of serving the Lord. You don't give in to the distractions, the delay, the disappointments, the discouragement. You know, you don't give in to all of those things. He says, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. That means you're flying above the storm. Okay. You're flying above it. You lock those wings in place and you're flying above the storm. And then this is what he says. See, this is a, a commandment here. It says they shall. Okay. This is not an option saying here, or you may, 
He's saying this is this is an instruction. I don't know if you've seen it that way or you've understood it that way. He says, they that wait upon the Lord, this is what you're instructed to do. Take up wings like an eagle. That means understand that you're seated in heavenly places above Christ Jesus. Understand that you are, even though naturally you're in the storm, but positionally you're above the storm. Okay. He says, understand this. He says, um, run. He, he says, they shall run. In other words, I'm giving you instruction to run. Okay. To run and not be weary. All right. He says, you shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. So there are positions of advancement that we should be taking. Okay. Whether we're running forward or we're walking forward, we're not walking backwards. We're not running away. Okay. We're running forward. Okay. In our position, in our advancement, we're moving forward without being weary, without fainting. Okay. See, the Bible talks about how there is a time when men's hearts fail them or they begin to faint because of fear. And so the word tells us here in this verse, to, he instructs us really to run without becoming weary and to walk without fainting. Okay, how do we do that? By keeping ourselves refreshed in the presence of the Lord. Okay, so these are divine strategies that God gives us. Okay, while delay is going on. See, delay does something. Okay, what God is working his plan while delay is going on, but also it strengthens us. OK, and it builds a character in us that that even in the next time when we are experiencing something or we're dealing with something, guess what? It, it, what we are dealing with, our faith right now is built on the strength of the things that we we experience in the times past and that God uh, God's plan brought us through. OK, and so um, so continue to be encouraged in that a um, couple of examples that um uh, I'm, I'm going to mention, but I'm not going to get into today for the sake of time because um, um, I'm going to begin to end. But um, J. Harris, uh, there's an account of J. Harris in the Bible in Mark chapter five. And we see delay that begins to go on in this whole account of what was going on with J. Harris. He comes to Jesus um, wanting you know, his daughter was still living at that moment. And this is in Mark chapter five. And you can go through and read that. But he comes to Jesus um, because his daughter was sick at the point of dying. But she hadn't died at the moment. And so he, Jesus is coming to his house. He begins to make journey towards his house. And along the way, Jesus gets stopped by the woman with the issue of blood and all of that whole circumstance <clears throat> goes on. So while all of this is going on, Jairus, you can imagine you know, the position that he's in, knowing that his daughter could die at any moment, and yet Jesus is being delayed because of the woman with the issue of blood, okay? It's never recorded of anything that Jairus, you know, says or does until um, somebody comes from his house saying that, don't trouble the master anymore because your daughter is dead. And then we see, and, and Jesus begins to speak at that very moment to let him know what our attitude should be, okay? See, our convictions are what begin to direct our lives. Our convictions are the, the, the things that we strongly hold on to, that we believe, okay? And so in the midst of while delay is going on, okay? Because that's what Jairus began to experience was delay and, and, and what he was expecting to take place with his daughter. And Jesus he arrests those emotions and, and, and that thing right there at the moment, he says, hey, don't be afraid. Jesus heard the ruler from his house come and say those words. And he says, don't be afraid. OK, the convictions that you had from the beginning that you believe that I would do this. He says, don't let go of that. OK, see, God is saying to all of us, he says, I'm still the same God that I said that I that I am. OK, I am who I said that I am. He says, I, I am doing what I said that I would do. See, God says, don't lose your convictions because you hear of all of the other things that are going on or because it seems like the enemy has an upper hand in certain things in your life. He says, don't lose your conviction of who you know that I am. 
okay? Don't start to backtrack on who God says that he is and what he revealed to you just because of a little pressure that's coming elsewhere, you know? He says, don't be afraid. Still understand that I am the resurrection and I am the life, okay? He says, you know, this is a question I wrote down, I heard this week. Can you believe God when it looks like it's dead? See, that's the, the question that God poses to all of us. Can you believe God when it looks like it's dead? See, see, that's your Red Sea moment. When, when you're out of all of your other options and it seems like there is no other option. See, he says, um, even as he told Mary and Martha, I think it was Martha in his actual occurrence, he says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Even the things that were dead, even though they were dead, yeah, yet shall they live. All right? See, can you believe God even when it looks like it's dead? And see, that's, that's the faith that God wants all of us to have, okay? He was telling Jairus, don't lose your conviction. You believe that, that before your daughter died that I could heal her. So guess what? There's no difference. There's no difference. I'm the same Jesus that, that would heal her as the same Jesus that will raise her up. And he'll raise up that situation and that circumstance in your life right now. So can you believe God to resurrect anything that's dead in your life? See, he's a God that restores. He's the one that makes all things new. He's the one that's taken us to a place that we haven't been before. But we've got to know that he will take us there and that he will advance us in his purpose and his plans, his destiny for our lives in these days. He will advance you. So you got to look away from the circumstance and you got to see what the Lord is doing. As we read in Isaiah 43, verse 19, do you see it? Can you see what the Lord is doing in your life right now? Can you see the place where he's taken us? And I'm telling you, it's great. Destination, greatness. I hear greater. I see greater. I see God doing greater in our lives. I see God doing greater in this time. And so I, I, I pray that you guys plug in and that you see what God is doing. Don't get tired. Don't get weary. Don't faint. See the salvation of the Lord in these days that you and I live in. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to stop right there. <clears throat> Be encouraged by the word of the Lord because that's God's word for you today. And so I want you to be strengthened and, and be refreshed and renewed. And, and as the Bible says, in the spirit of your mind, you know, when you hear the word of God, there should be a refreshing. There should be a, an encouragement that takes place because you know that God is speaking to you in those things. And, and, and God is, you know, he's encouraging you um, to keep on keeping on, as they say, you know. So um, I want to encourage you out there if you're listening and, and you don't have a place that you call your church home. Um, I want you to to understand that uh, that God wants you to be plugged in. He wants you to have a place where, um, uh, just like you know, nobody likes to live out of a hotel. You know, nobody lives out of a hotel. You know that enjoys it. You know, even when people travel for uh, long periods of time, they enjoy coming back home and sleeping in their own bed. There's something always about a place called home that all of us look forward to coming back to, you know? And so as far as church is concerned, all of us should have a place that we call home. There should be a place that we can hang our hat on, you know? And, you know, so God doesn't want us, you know, just going from place to place, like you would go from hotel to hotel. He wants you to have a place that you call home, a place where you know that, you know, you can get a, a very good meal, nothing like a home cooked meal, you know what I'm saying? So it's nothing like having a place that you can call home spiritually, where you can grow, where you can be fed, where your family can grow and you can be plugged in and hooked into what God is doing in these days. OK, where you can be connected to the apostolic and prophetic uh, anointing that is on this house, at least. And God will do tremendous things in your life. And so if you're out there and you don't have a place that you call your church home, I invite you to become a part of Faith Christian Center World Outreach. And uh, if you're in the Fredericksburg area, um, please, you know, get pl plugged into what God is doing. And so God did not leave you out there. He did not put you in these days and in this time so that you could just sit at home, you know, get fat off of the word of God and, and go about your life. OK, God wants you to be plugged into what he is doing because he's raising up an army 
He's raising up a, 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 an army in this time, in this generation that you and I are living in. And, and there is advancement that is taking place where his agenda is coming to pass. And so um, you should be a part of it because you're here now. And so um, if you are um, outside of the Fredericksburg area, you know, um, and you're watching us um, from around the world or another state or wherever it is that you're watching us from, we encourage you to continue to uh, uh, get plugged into us in any way that you can. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, continue to enjoy the word that comes forth from this house. Um, you know, support us in all aspects in any way that you can. And if you ever visit Fredericksburg, Virginia, definitely look us up. But we also want you um, to get plugged into a local house there. I know that there are states and places that are still, and you may be watching your church is still not doing services on site, you know? And so until that time, plug in, get hooked into what we're doing. And um, you can be an offsite member of our church, you know, we'll welcome you in. But when there is on-site churches that are going on in your area, we encourage you to get plugged into that church in that local area and get involved in the work. And it doesn't mean that you can't still celebrate us and support us and all of those things, but we want you to plug into that, to that local house, all right? And so, because uh, that's what God would have you to do. And so, um, but if you're here in this area, you know, um, plug in, plug in, get plugged into what God is doing. Um, if you're out there and you don't know Jesus as Savior and Lord, I invite you to, um, to make him Lord and Savior, excuse me. Um, I, I invite you to make him Lord and Savior in your life. Um, and so the Bible says that God loves us so much that he sent his only son. That's his purpose. That's his agenda. That's his plan. Okay. He sent his only son to die for us and whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And so that's God's purpose for all of mankind. Okay. So that um, we would experience the, the, that Zoe life, the best life that God has for us. All right. So if that's you, I want to lead you in a prayer that on this day that you can re receive Jesus into your life and the life of God will come on the inside of you and uh, you will become a child of the Most High God and, and adopted into his family. All right. So say these words after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus is your son who died for me and who also was raised from the dead for me. So I confess Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior, and that this day forward, I am a child of God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for saving me. I ask you to forgive me of all sin that I committed against you and receive me into your family. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. Um, there's so many of us that are all around the world. There's so many of us that have passed on in the previous generations that all of us at one point in time or eternity will be able to meet and greet and, and fellowship together. And so we look forward to that, to those moments. And so um, I encourage you, if you just prayed that prayer, to uh, get plugged in, um, as I mentioned before, get plugged into a local church. Um, if you want more information on, on this life of walking as a, as a, a son or a daughter of God now, uh, we wanna encourage you in this. And so um, we even have a discipleship course that we do to help um, uh, uh, new believers to get plugged in and understand uh, things about the Bible and this new walk that God has uh, for you right now. So that's very, very important to do so so that um, you can understand um, who you are in Christ Jesus. Well, um, if you have any prayer requests out there also, um, please let us know. We get prayer requests during the week of things that people want us to pray for and pray about. And so um, we believe that God's power comes and resides um, in our words and that God's ears are open to our prayers. And so um, we speak the word of God in faith and we see, as the Bible says, um, call for the elders of the church and, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. All right. And so we believe that God answers the prayers and he heals, he delivers, he sets free all of those things. So you can go on our site and submit your prayer requests or you can go to 
uh, fchristiancenter at gmail.com. You can also email us a request. But um, we do pray. And, and let us know when you get a good report. When you get a praise report, let us know so that we can know that God uh, has answered that prayer specifically about those things in your life. Um, um, because we know that he answers prayers, but um, we want to know, hear from you so that we can also share those testimonies with others um, that they may too be encouraged about what God has done. So, you know, it, it's one thing to read it in the Bible and see what God did for somebody in the Bible. And then there's um, an, a, a, an additional thing when we experience it in our lives and are able to personally share those experiences with others. So um, then it helps us to know that what God said in the Bible, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It helps people to know uh, the, the realities of that in their life. All right. So um, also... Um, right now, those of you that have uh, tithed or given offerings on our site, we want to pray with you right now and uh, present all of our tithes and offerings before the Lord. And so um, I'm going to ask you right now where you are in your place of, of home or wherever it is that you are watching to uh, lift your hands right now as we're going to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings as we go before him. So, Father, it is in the name of Jesus that we honor you and we bless you today. We thank you for all the tithes and offerings that are presented here today uh, on the behalf of all of our viewers, um, those that are, are, are associates of Faith Christian Center World Outreach. <clears throat> thank you, Father, for uh, your blessings that are on our lives and the open doors of favor that are on us, Father. During this time, Father, even as you advance us in many different areas in this day of the church, we know that financial ad advancement is one of those areas. And so we thank you, Father, that you are, are, are causing restoration. You're causing restoration in finances. You're causing uh, uh, those things that had been stolen. So many finances have been stolen from the body of Christ, from your church, from, um, from our families. So many things have been stolen that we, we believe you now, Father, that you are bringing restoration and repayment, okay? Not just restoration, but repayment with interest. For as your word says that when the thief is caught, that he must repay sevenfold. So we thank you, Father, right now in Jesus' name, that you're increasing us the more and the more. Thank you, Father, that, that there are, are monies that are coming into our accounts that we did not know about. That there are favors and, 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 and things that are taking place, Father, that is causing increase to take place in our lives. There are new business opportunities and deals that are taking place right now. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, that, that even as those things happen in our lives, that because we partner with you in heaven, that we will also be mindful to honor you with our, um, th that increase through the means of tithes and offerings. We turn to you, Lord Jesus, as our faithful high priest. And I hear you all out there saying hallelujah. And, and so we worship you with all our tithes and offerings on this day. Thank you for your righteous, favorable decrees that are issued right now from your throne and in the courts right now. And your stamp of a, your seal of approval is on it. And I thank you, Father, in Jesus name right now, Father, that your blessing is on us, is pronounced on us. Your favor is pronounced on us right now in Jesus name, not just in our finances, but also in our bodies and our health in all of our well-being, for you wish above all things that we prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. And so we bless you, we honor you today, and we thank you for it all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All righty. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you for uh, tuning in today. Um, I encourage you to also tune in at 7 p.m. tonight. Catch the fire with Apostles Chastine and Ella Rock. Uh, they are, 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 are laying it down. Um, and so uh, 7 p.m. tonight, um, you can check us out on Vimeo.com forward slash FCCWO Church. Again, that is Vimeo, V-I-M-E-O dot com forward slash FCCWO Church. And um, you can catch the fire um, that way or um, you can look us up on Facebook. FCCWO Church or Faith Christian Center World Outreach and you can follow us on Facebook through those means as well but it's uh, 7 p.m. nightly um, and so um, 
We are definitely over the halfway hump. Um, I think it's on day 37 today, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but catch the fire. Catch the things that, that uh, the apostles are, are laying out for us, um, you know, and apply these things. You know, sometimes we have to be mindful that be, because we, uh, we hear the word all of the time that we can take things for granted. And then sometimes, you know, because we take it for granted, we don't have the, the urgency and the, the, the hunger or the desperateness sometimes to apply it to our lives. And so it's very important that as we hear all of these wonderful teachings that we apply these things to our lives and, and with some urgency, with some urgency, you understand? And so um, I encourage you to check it out 7 p.m. tonight, tune in and, um, and start your day, all right? As the Bible says, the evening and the morning were the, 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 the first day. Start your day. God's day starts in the evening. Start your day with apostles and, um, and, and enjoy the word of God. Well, um, I'm going to uh, end things here today. So again, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, on the behalf of Apostles Chastain and Ella Rock, I'm Pastor Milton. We are FCCWO Church. Um, God bless you. May he continue to keep you throughout this week, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Amen.